the 4th of July, um, I woke up at 4 o'clock in the morning. And you know how sometimes you wake up uh, really early and you know you can get back to sleep? And sometimes you wake up really early and you know you're not going to get back to sleep. Up, so you might as well get up. And I like to start the day by reading. And uh, sometimes the news is way too vulgar a way to start the day. Um, and I was really unhappy with the book I was reading. The author was lazy. He wasn't asking anything of me. Uh, and I wasn't going to go back to bed. So I was desperate for, for something to read. And there was a book on the nightstand that my wife's best friend had sent her. And the title of it was Help, Thanks, Wow, Three Essential Prayers. Now, I am as about as snobby a reader as you can find. Uh, my family has looked down popular books our whole lives. And uh, uh, A, I don't read books with titles like that. I don't want people to see me with the right books. But I was, I, I needed help. So uh, Susan's going to move the slides along. Because I did read the prelude. And uh, I found that the prelude uh, spoke of something different in me. Um, the book is about prayer, and now you have somebody who's never prayed in their life reading it. Um, but I thought I'll give it a shot, and I also have this perspective that I'm desperate for something that might help you and I. So I'm always looking for something, is there something that can help you and I? So I opened the book up, and Anne Lamott said, I don't know much about God and prayer, but I've come to believe over the past 25 years there's something to be said about keeping prayer simple. Help. Wow. Thanks. You may be, in fact, wondering what I even mean when I use the word prayer. It's certainly not what the three TV Christians mean. It's not for display purposes, like plastic sushi or neon. Prayer is private. Even when we pray with others, it is communication for the heart, to that which surpasses understanding. Let us say it's communication from one's heart to God. Or if that is too triggering or ludicrous a concept for you, to the good, the force that is beyond our comprehension, when our pain or supplication or relief we don't need to define or have proof of any established contact with. Let's, see, let's say it's what the Greeks call the really real. What lies within us, beyond the scrim of our values, positions, convictions, and wounds, or let's say it's a cry from deep within life, or love with capital L's. Nothing can matter less than what we call this force. I know some ironic believers who call God power. As in, our Father who art in heaven, power be thy name. I called God Phil once for a long time. After a Mexican bracelet maker promised to make me Right, Bill 447 on my bicep. <laughs> Philippians 447 being my favorite pastor of scripture, but God only as far as Bill before having to dismantle the booth. Bill is a great name for God. <laughs> my friend Robin calls God <clears throat> the grandmothers, the deteriorata, a parody of the deserata, counsels us. Therefore, make peace with your God, whatever you conceive him to be. Harry Thunder or Cosmic Muffin. <laughs> Let's not get bogged down on whom or what we pray to. Let's just say prayer is communication from our hearts to the great mystery or goodness or power. To the animating energy of love, we are sometimes bold enough to believe in, to sometimes and to something unimaginably big, and not us. We could call this force not me, and not preachers on stage with a choir of 800. Or, for convenience, we could just say God. Some of you were taught to pray at bedtime with your parents. And when I spent the night at your houses, I heard all of you saying these terrifying words. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep if I should die before I wake. Wait, what? What did you say? I could die in my sleep? I'm only seven years old. I pray the Lord my soul to take. That so, so did not work for me, especially in the dark in a strange home. Don't be taking my soul. You leave my soul right here in my 50-pound body. Help. <laughs> Sometimes the first time we pray, we cry out to the, the deepest desperation, God help me. This is a great prayer. A 
as we are then are absolutely most degraded and isolated, which means we are nice and juicy with the consequences of our best thinking and are thus possibly teachable. Or I might be in one of my dangerously good moods and say casually, hey, hi, person, me again, the princess, and give my sobriety, my grandson, my flowering pear tree. Or you might shout at the top of your lungs or whisper in your sleeve, I hate you, God. That is prayer, too, because it is real. It is truth. And maybe it's the first sincere thought you've had in months. Some of us have cavernous vibrations inside us when we communicate with God. Others are more rational and less messy in our spiritual sense of reality, in our petitions and gratitude and expressions of pain or anger or desolation or praise. Prayer means that, in some unique way, we believe we're invited into a relationship with someone who hears us when we speak in silence. We can pray for things. Lord, won't, Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes? <laughs> we can pray for people. Please help Martin's, heal Martin's cancer. Please help me not be such an asshole. <laughs> we may pray for things that would destroy us. As Teresa of Avila says, more tears are shed over answered prayers than unanswered ones. We can pray for having a shot of life in which we are present and awake and paying attention and being kind to ourselves. We can pray, hello, is there anyone out there? We can pray, am I too far gone? Or can you help me get out of my isolated self-obsession we can say anything to God. It's all prayer. Prayer can be emotions and stillness and energy all at the same time. It begins with stopping in our tracks or with our backs against the wall or when we're going under the waves or when we're just so sick and tired of being psychically sick and tired that we surrender or at least we finally stop running away at, at long last and walk or lurch or crawl towards something. Or maybe, miraculously, we just release our grip slightly. Prayer is talking to something or anything which which we seek union, even if we are bitter or insane or broken. In fact, these are probably the best talk conditions under which to pray. <laughs> Prayer is taking a chance that against all odds and past history, we are loved and chosen, and we don't have to get it together before we show up. The opposite may be true. We may not be able to get it together until we show up in such miserable shape. But in any case, we're making contact with something unseen, way bigger than we could ever imagine in our wildest dreams, even if we are the most brilliant, open-minded scientists and physicists of our generation. It is something we might dare to call divine intelligence or love energy if there were no chance that anyone would ever find out about this. Prayer is us, human humans, merely being, as E.E. E. Cummings put it, reaching out to something having to do with the eternal, with vitality, intelligence, kindness, even when we are most utterly doomed and skeptical, God can, hand and skeptical. God can handle honesty, and prayer begins with an honest conversation. My belief is that when you're talking to God, you're close to God. If you say to God, I'm exhausted and depressed beyond words, and I don't like you, you are right. You are right now. All I excuse me. You at all right now. I don't like you at all right now. And I recoil from most people who believe in you. That might be the most honest thing you ever said. If you told me you said to God, it is all hopeless, and I don't have a clue if you exist. But I could use a hand. It'd be almost bring tears to my eyes. Tears of pride. For the courage it takes to get real, really real, it would make me want to sit next to you at the dinner table. So prayer is our sometimes real selves trying to communicate with the real, with truth, with the light. It is something out, it is reaching out to be heard, hoping to be found by light and warmth in the world, instead of darkness and cold. Even mushrooms respond to light. I suppose they blink their mushroomy mushroom little eyes like the rest of us. Right, light, reveals us our, light reveals us to ourselves, which is not always so great if you find yourself in a big, disgusting mess, possibly of your own creation. But like sunflowers, we turn toward the light. Light warms, and in most cases, it draws us to itself. And in this light, 
we can see beyond shadow and allusion to something beyond our modern receptors to what is way beyond us and deep inside. This is all hard to articulate, but it's so real, so huge, beyond mystery. Rumi said that all words are fingers pointing to the moon. And we think the words are the moon, but because of the light, the light of love, the energy and motion that have called us to prayer, bits of this deeper reality are perceivable and little bits of it will have to do. My three prayers are variations of how things, wow, that's all I ever need. Besides the silence, the pain, and the pause sufficient for me to stop, close my eyes, and turn inward. You know, it's a short book, about 40 pages. I didn't get up off the couch until I finished it. Um, and then, you know, you can like hide it, but I can't my eyes. <laughs> um, so that changed some things for me. And uh, I found out that I could essentially pray to trees, and I do regularly. So if you see me out and about, and I look like kind of a crazy person, <laughs> could be just in the neighborhood or in the park, um, I actually have this ritual now. <laughs> you know, whether anything comes of it, I don't know. Do I think of myself kind of like a crazy man sometimes too? Yeah. But, um, you know, I said yesterday that I think that we kind of have two places we should stand, but now we have a bill out. One is you've done something nobody's ever done. And the second thing is we need to have the greatest sense of humility we can possibly have and ask for allies for, from wherever we can get them. So, again, thank you. This has been an amazing couple of days for me. Okay, Wild West. Here we are at the end. What an amazing conference. I'm just getting the tinkles thinking about how the weekend went and uh, just a huge amount of gratitude to the, everybody who did a ton of work to make this so spectacular. Uh, mainly I wanted to just say right now that um, I have an official announcement and that is that the uh, Wild West Regional Wild West region is taking on a new name starting tomorrow morning, and it will be called the Mountain West region. And that's, uh, we wanted to wait on this announcement. We've been talking to a lot of the leaders in our states, and the idea is we want to have a, a very professional presence as we try to continue to expand and build our relationships across all parties. <laughs> I thought it was me. So now we begin version 2.0, the Mountain West region. Our goals remain the same, to activate all our levels of political will and build on the incredible successes we have had in our region already. Whether it be lobbying Congress, media relations, grassroots outreach, grass talks engagement, different levers work in different areas. There are many opportunities before us. I am filled with hope and inspiration from your participation and appreciate what a great team we are. Our work is not a sprint nor a marathon, but rather like walking the continental divide with peaks and valleys throughout. Please be sure to take the time <clears throat> to take in the view from time to time, to savor our successes and have fun along the way as we continue to move forward. Uh, when the bill was introduced the first time in November last year, I've been working a lot with Keith Vordenberg. He's the former U.S. cross-country ski team coach. And uh, I was telling him about it, and we've been working a lot to try to get support from the ski industry and athletes. And um, I told him about it, and, and you know, as CCLers, we're like, okay, we got that done That's in the tank. Now what are we going to do next? And we move on and we try to work on what, what's the next thing we can pull to be more effective and have more results. And um, he called me and he said, I'm out in front of your house and I got something for you. And um, he, he walked uh, to my door and he had a, a, 
case of 750 milliliter IPA bottles of beer for me. <laughs> and I was like, wow, what, that's awesome. Why are you doing this? And he said to me, um, you know, in all my experience with my training, he was an Olympian himself, and as a coach, he said, you know, we're always focused on out there, like, okay, I did well in this race, but I gotta be really good for that race. And he said, the one thing that I really regret is that I didn't take time to appreciate what we've already accomplished. And I really want uh, us to think about what we have already done and to hold that, because it's really special. So now I'm gonna go off script, like I learned from Dave, David Klein. <laughs> And I've, and I've been uh, just kind of writing down notes throughout the weekend. Um, and so I'm going to just kind of read through my notes, and then, uh, then we're free for the rest of the day. And, um, and then, again, I, this has just been an amazing experience for me, and I hope for all of you. Um, first of all, we do have the most beautiful region in all of the United States. <laughs> When I first got involved with TTL, um, there weren't many of us. And I remember Mark used to read quotes uh, every Tuesday on our group leader call. And I swear he read this quote and he, he like, well maybe I was the only one on the call, but it sure felt like he was just, he had plucked this thing out and just, it was like pointing it right at me. And I'm not gonna read it. It was by Max Weber and the bottom line is, it's here I stand. We can. I here I stand. I can do no other. And I want to change the pronoun and say, here we stand, and we can do no other. And I think that's the feeling and sentiment that so many of us have. This is a really important thing we're working on. We're doing it together, and here we stand doing it. Um, I want to point out. Uh, that the quality of people that I have run across being involved with this and climate lobby has blown me away. And I'm really grateful for that. That's a big part of what's special about our organization. Um, I want to encourage people to enjoy every moment they have uh, because we can enjoy what we're doing and do great work in, in parallel. Um, for me, at CCL, we believe in what is possible, and to me this is so important, that we hold the space for what's possible and always carry that with us, even when it's hard. And I think that's really helped move a lot of us through these years, and always to keep moving. Support each other. This is not just a team or a family of people caring about something greater than us. Um, I actually took this from Brian Netling, who is in CCL in Oregon. And he quoted an author who I've never read. Uh, I'm not as good of a reader as Mark. Um, <laughs> and I'll probably pronounce her name wrong, too. Maya Angelou. I should have read it from the author. But what, what he quoted was, I've learned that people forget what you said but people will never forget how you make them feel. And I think that's what CCL is really good at, is, you know, we go in there and people feel good because we respect, we care, we build relationships, and we keep going. Um, now I wanna, I, did everyone get to see the last um, presentation? It doesn't seem like a presentation. No, 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 uh, yesterday, uh, Craig. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. I love this. Be more verb than noun. Yep. And I think that uh, we have succeeded as CCL to be verb. And we'll continue to be verb in the work that we do. Uh, the last thing that I wanted to just put out is, is a bit of a stretch goal for all of us. Um, and it's it's been a stretch goal that I've stretched and stretched and stretched, and that is um, stepping out of your comfort zone. And, and you know, 
It doesn't have to be a huge step, but try on a step. And I have found that for me, stepping out of my comfort zone allowed me to take a stand in a way for this issue that's so important to me in a, a way that I never dreamed possible in my whole life, ever. And it's happening, and I encourage people to try just something a little extra uh, for the cause. And um, it, it's added to the experience for me in a huge way. And um, with that, I, can you guys come up? I know we were going to bid farewell. Um, I, I just can't get over what an amazing weekend this has been. And I know how much the team has worked on this. And I know how much you two have worked on this. And I just want to extend my gratitude as your regional coordinator for what an amazing job and weekend this 